Normally, I wouldn't put a new driver on a run this late at night. The last time you slept. I'm totally fine. Look at me. Oh, yeah. You're real confidence-inspiring. I will so get this thing to the museum tonight. I swear to God. All right, look. If you feel yourself starting to nod, you pull over. If the storm gets worse, you pull over. If you have to so much as scratch your ass, you pull over. We'll be fine. We. Me and the band. I got some freaky metalhead telling me some freaky story. And if I gotta crawl out of bed at the crack of dawn, the lab guys have to. And their union rules can personally kiss my ass. Anything else there, Willie? More coffee, a uh, morning paper? Because if you're not too busy, there's some crime scene photos to take. You're not taking any photos. We're taking it from here. Who the hell are you? Special unit two, later. Sorry, officer, but this is our jurisdiction. We're going to have to ask you to leave. And this is your jurisdiction just because you say so? That answer is correct. I'm on the force 20 years, and I'm not stepping off a case when no one even knows what the hell it is you people do. Green. 
Understood. See you another time, detectives. Not if we see you first. Very nice. You're walking you in, you know that? Don't you realize it's easier to be polite than a hard ass? Actually, they did a study at Harvard. Apparently, it really is easier being a hard ass. Well, it probably wouldn't matter if Officer Green did see these things with his own eyes. He just convinced himself they weren't real. Officer Green's running a few courts low. Yep. It's about being closed-minded. There are plenty of bright, college-educated people who couldn't deal with it either. Actually, you just reminded me. I gotta play some bets on Saturday's games. You didn't hear a word I just said. Sure I did. College. You guys... I'm Officer Benson. This is Officer O'Malley. What happened here? I saw this dead guy stick his hand through a two-by-four and strangle me. And yeah, I know how that sounds, but that's the deal, right? What else? Nothing. I blacked out. But when I opened my eyes, there was no mummy in the crate anymore. Okay, you have a concussion. Things are mixed up in your head, that's all. Even more mixed up than usual. But look at the bruises on my neck. Well, you were in an accident. You're gonna have bruises everywhere. Artifact 22171 was a mummy. It woke up, it strangled me, and I'm going to the Inquirer. Okay, Jerry. Jerry, we can treat the missing artifact as an opportunistic robbery, make sure you don't get the blame, and release you. Or you can stick to your story, but then the doctors are just gonna have to run tests. Tests? Well, scans, internal probes. Probes? And blood work, to see if any illicit substances might have been contributing to what you think you saw. You know, that was a pretty hard knock I got on the head. This sweater is irreplaceable. So, where is it? I'll look for it as soon as I have time. You said that ten minutes ago. Do they work here? What, I'm waiting and what, they get to go back and get their own clothes? Sean. He's doing a VR simulation. He's fully escalated. Best thing would be to wait until he's done. Carl, call for you on three. What's up? <laughs> I got your research done. I was on lunch, O'Malley. Interactive raving, a night in a visa. You know what? Private workstation. Yeah, I like my ears tickle. Hey! <laughs> what we have here is your usual mummy reactivation. Things dead for 4,000 years and gets revived by an electrical storm. How usual is this? Well, Special Unit 2 has dealt with 11 revivified mummies over the last 60 years. The only difference is our suspect's kind of a rare specimen. He's of Japanese, not Egyptian origin. Rare because Japan used to cremate their dead, being an island nation. Right. How do we kill him? You can't kill him, O'Malley. He's already dead. You know what I mean. Can we shoot him? No internal organs to disrupt. And we'll light him on fire. <laughs> not internally flammable. Drown him? How many more ways of hurting things can you think of? Now, the only force that has any effect on mummies is electricity. Electricity revives them and in larger quantities destroys them. Okay, specifically how? Specifically, you stun the suspect with 10,000 volts. That knocks him out for about an hour, which gives you plenty of time to plunge a steel rod into where his heart used to be and send another 10,000 straight down in there. Works for me. Now, a suspect was being transported to the museum to be displayed with other artifacts from his tomb. Stuff he was promised he would have and he woke up in the afterlife. So we assume this suspect thinks this is the afterlife and he goes looking for his stuff. Yeah, so we stake out the museum and wait for him to come get it. Nice to have a slow pitch down the middle every once in a while. O'Malley, have the mummy back here by morning. No more witnesses. And make sure this thing doesn't actually hurt someone. Here. How about doing your job and getting us some information? Not specifically anything about a 4,000-year-old guy last seen in Lincoln Parkway. What are we supposed to split that?
Naturally, you have my full cooperation, but um, I'm really not sure how we can help. The artifact was stolen miles from here. Well, we think the person responsible for the mummy's disappearance will come to the museum to obtain the contents of the tomb. Oh. And, and how did you come to that conclusion? A lot of wild guesswork and too much time on our hands. Inside information. I understand if you can't reveal your sources. Yeah, we're going to need your guards to clear out during our stakeout, at least until dawn. Uh, of course. Thank you, Dr. Edens. Uh, please, Harlan. Um, keep me posted, detectives. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon, Harlan. Oh, have I said I think Dr. Harlan digs you? Uh, no, just 18 times in the last two hours. <laughs> just because he smiled at me. No, because the way he smiled at you. Okay, you're imagining things. Like you smiling back at him? You know what? Your problem is you only smile at people when you're trying to get something from them. Well, I wear out the muscles. Look, I was being friendly. Look it up in the dictionary. Big book, a lot of words. And why do you always feel you need to keep people as far away as possible? Well, working in Special Unit 2, there's too many things you can't say. Too many secrets to uh, have relationships. That's an excuse. No, oh, it's a survival strategy. If you're right about us not having relationships, it really won't be much of an adjustment for me. I usually scare guys anyway. What, by telling them what you've seen that no one else has? No, by telling them what I really think about everything. By being honest. Well, that's always a mistake in a relationship. Verbal warning. To a mummy? Remember, Dorothy, this isn't the regular police. Dorothy. Well, that's just great. The only existing sample of Australopithecus africanus. That's... Well, who the hell turned on the dehumidifier? Well, I think they do that to keep the bones dry when they're being fused. I like this gun. That hurt. said the stun gun would knock that thing out for an hour. One hour. It's possible we didn't fully appreciate this particular mummy's background. Right, forget a stun gun. I want a C4 grenade. I want a bazooka. I want an anti-tank missile. What background, Redmond? Being mummified in Japan was reserved only for a few emperors and their warriors. So this thing was a professional warrior? The most trusted and feared samurai who ever lived. Thank you for that extremely important, extremely late piece of information. Hey, at least you're alive. That's more I can say for the mummy and uh, Australopithecus africanus. Now, in light of this, is electricity still the right approach? 
yeah, it's just that we need a lot more voltage than a stun gun has, and we have to somehow get close enough to deliver it. How about using you as a human catcher's mask? All right, look, we got to find more about this mummy's history, possible motives, so we can predict a pattern. Sounds like a plan, officers. Get to it. Uh, may I help you? I hope so. You need a belt. Yes. Um, with those pants, you can go with brown or black. What do you think? You decide. Okay. Black. 34 waist? You decide. <laughs> I'm sorry for staring at you, but you just look so familiar. Have we met? No, I'm, I'm new to this area. Really? Where are you from? Koichi Basin. Is that in Illinois? No, not Illinois. Move it, Carl. Yeah, I know I didn't call her, but just tell her I left her three messages, all right? <coughs> Relax yourself, all right, O'Malley? Okay. I've just been busy talking to my peeps. All right, I'll see you guys Friday night, and it's $20 to buy in. Okay. What do you have, Carl? Your mommy's definitely out there, but you don't need me to tell you that. Out there where? Not sure. We see him one place, next minute he's not there. We don't know how. He's also getting help. From who? Not a who, an it. A Herkimer. I didn't know there were any Herkimers left in the city anymore. All right, what's a Herkimer? Another undead thing. I'll explain later. Start trying to find the Herkimer. Done. Do you have any specific locations on where the mummy's been spotted? Two hours ago, in an alley at State and Roosevelt. All right, I'll check the crime grid, see if anything happened in the area. Okay, I'll get another car from the precinct and start work on the mummy's background. Hey, O'Malley. You still pissed about what that thing did to you? All I want to do is catch it before it does any harm to the public. I heard it really kicked your ass. best we can. Which obviously isn't good enough. If you can't find my sweater, then let me look. No customers behind the counter. What is that? What is what? The poster. No customers behind the counter. Watch your head. Oh. Hey, Jimmy. I'm looking for a Herkimer. Yeah, the one working with the mummy. I guess there really are no secrets, huh? I'm looking for a friend. Don't make me break all four of your legs. All right, he's not really a friend, but could you help me find him? Jimmy! Jimmy! No, I can't tell you why, but I can tell people about you and that stripper last Thursday night. Hey, Laurie, how's it going? Yeah, I had a nice time, too. Listen, I may get off early tonight. You feel like Italian? I make a mean carbonara. Carl! Tend to your flock of harlots and tramps on your own time. She happens to be a board-certified urologist, and I resent your comment. Get back to work, or I'll mail her a copy of your rap sheet. I gotta go. Yeah, bring the cover now.
piece of his wraps at the crime scene. He definitely took her. Signs of a struggle, but no blood. Well, hopefully she's still alive, but what does he want with her? I'll ask him when I find him, and I will find him. Okay, do I need to say that stopping this thing before he kidnaps more women is more important than any personal vendetta you might have? Once I find it and painfully kick its ugly mummified link ass into small pieces all over the greater Chicago area, it won't be kidnapping women anymore. Well, just making sure. I've been digging into every file we have and I can't find much more in our mummy. Sean, we don't have a chance of finding this thing until we figure out what he wants. I'm just letting you know it's not easy. Right, or you would have given us the right information about the mummy in the first place. Okay, I'm just completely consumed by guilt is all. All right, you work your end from here. I'm going straight to the source. All right, are you, are, you, are you done? It's my turn to talk now, okay? It's my turn. Don't act like... Don't act like you haven't seen the Herkimer, because I know better! can actually tell me what happened last night with the intruder. All the destruction and the security tapes are blank. Well, we can't disclose any information until the investigation's been completed. Are you close? I, I do believe that there's a substantial market for museum-quality artifacts. Well, we have reason to believe this isn't about money. Listen, Doctor, what else can you tell me about this particular mummy? Or the uh, significance of the jeweled staff? Well... The jeweled staff is used in a ceremony that, uh, once completed, gives the revived warrior godlike powers, enabling him to rule on Earth. <laughs> what else would the warrior need for this ceremony? Just the other mummies. What others? Uh, the Koichi warrior was buried with three concubines, uh, female slaves, each of a different race to symbolize a world empire, uh, but they decayed in the tomb. They, they didn't survive the centuries. So he might be looking for female substitutes. You think that this might be an occult serial killer trying to recreate the ceremony? Um, we're looking at all possibilities. Well, I hope not. <laughs> um, in the ceremony, the um, three concubines are in fact sacrificed. Actually, they're burned alive on a pyre of flame. Ah, great. Well, thank you, Dr. Edens. We'll keep you posted. Right. Um, Detective, I'm not very good at this sort of thing, but, um, well, I was thinking, well, wondering, really, if perhaps, um, dinner, maybe tonight. Uh, um, my schedule's, uh, pretty tight. So, uh, maybe some other time. Oh, right. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Great. The suspect is collecting everything he was buried with, including three female slaves who he'll eventually burn alive. Based on missing persons reports, he's got two of the women already. Any explanation how he's managing to abduct these women in plain sight without anyone noticing? We believe a revivified organism has undifferentiated plasmatic reconstructive qualities. Okay, Sean, abla inglese. We think he can morph his flesh and change his appearance. Which explains why Carl's informants can't ever track him for too long. Page. We may be in luck. Carl's found something you've been looking for. I price each piece carefully. Now, if I were to discount something, I'd be saying it isn't really worth what I said it was. I'd have to spend some money getting it refinished. And take away its essential character? Do you really want some workmen to attack the piece with solvents and chisels? No. 
So, you need to decide then. Do you want to take the piece off the market or not? All right, I'll take it. There you are. One Herkimer coming up. Charrington? Yeah? Uh, I got some bad news for you. And what might that be? You gotta get out of the store. Right now, your husband's at a motel, two blocks away, having an affair. My husband is away on a business trip in Singapore with my uncle. You know, I've had experiences with prank phone calls before, and I'm one of those few people who actually made sure the offender was successfully prosecuted. All right. So long as you don't mind what I'm going to do to your dachshund. Goodbye now, while I call the police and have this call traced. Nice pink bow. Who is this? A very sick person who likes dogs, but not the way you do. I like him with salt. I don't find that funny. You don't have my dog. Not only am I sitting in your house with your dog on your plush burgundy couch. Oh, my God. I'm playing with her favorite toy. The green tennis ball? Yeah, the green tennis ball. What are you doing? Why are you there? Didn't you hear me? I'm going to eat your dog. I put the water on the stove. Shh. I don't believe you. I'm going to cut up some vegetables. And you know what? Celery really helps take out that gamey taste. You wouldn't do that! What do you think? Rare? Medium? Or well done? No. 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 Hello, please. I've got an intruder in my house. I'm on my way. Rare? Medium? Or well done? Come to Papa. I told you we'd find it. Last. The stain's not totally out. What kind of place is this? Coming through. Hey, how you doing? Did you see that? Who was that? Who's who? That's it. I'm finding another cleaners. Pergamers first showed up at bazaars and trading posts in the Middle East where they handled negotiations. Basically professional bargainers, anything for a price. Pergamers got a low operating temperature. It's cold in there, so I picked you up a little something on the way in. You stole it, as in grand larceny? Misdemeanor. It's imitation fur. Unlike O'Malley, I don't believe in harming small, adorable creatures. I just believe in harming small, obnoxious, devious ones. Dry ice. Not only keeps the temperature down, but this thing breathes carbon dioxide. Here it goes. Hey, can you hear us? I can hear you. I'm lacking a body, not a brain. Go rot and die. Oh, oops. <laughs> Too late. Do you know what we're looking for? Let me guess. My body. The mummy of the Koichi Basin warrior. Who was revived two days ago and it's collecting women. Of course I know what you're looking for. He's been like this since I found him. Really sarcastic and annoying. It's unbelievable. You think so? Word on the street is you've been helping the mummy out. Why don't you tell us how? What's in it for me? What do you want? A hundred and fifty dollars. You speak forty-five caliber? Because if not, I can translate. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Here, here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Count it. Come on, this is ridiculous. He's toying with us. All right, coming from a man who's holding his gun to the head of a head. Now, what'd you do for the mummy? He had me kidnap and stay somewhere. Stash who? It was dark, and I didn't ask for ID. Where are you keeping this person? In a liquid fractal. I'll explain later. And how does a head in a box manage to do any of this? Mind over matter. The secret that hides in plain sight. The real world seen through the shadows. Hmm? 
In other words, he's not going to tell you. Kate, they got Dr. Edens from the museum on the line for you. Sounds related. I'll finish up. Okay. You got an address on this fractal? Hey. Come on. You're still into me for 250. <laughs> yes, I don't mean to bother you, but I did think of something that may be of help. Tell me. Well, apparently, the jewels from the warrior's staff can be used to locate their owner. How? Well, it seems you place the jewels from the staff into a rune box, which then acts like a sort of compass, guiding you right to the warrior. Do any of these rune boxes still exist? Oh, yes, yes. The museum has one in its permanent collection. I'll be there in 20. Oh, no, no, it's not actually on display. We, um, we keep it in storage in one of our warehouses. I say, you don't really think that the rune box could lead you to the thief, do you? Well, it's a uh, department procedure to gather all related evidence. What's the address? Uh, 311 Ogden. I say, do you need directions? Nope, I'll see you in 15. Okay. Well, it's a long shot, but if this rune box will actually lead us to the mummy, we'll be home free. We'll call you as soon as we find the liquid fractal. Mr. Potato Head better not be leading us on a wild goose chase. Once Arkhamer strikes a deal, his word is as good as gold. They're completely trustworthy. And what would you know about that? I'm ignoring that. You think the mummy already kidnapped this third woman? And that's who's stashed in the liquid fractal? Maybe. But it doesn't match the mummy's M.O. You're right. And you realize you just actually asked me my advice on the case. doesn't look particularly high security. Uh, it's well alarmed on the inside. We feel anonymity is probably our best protection. Understood. The entrance is over here. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Say hey, Right, it's uh, Dallas Carter on the left. Now that is not the property of the Chicago Cubs. I haven't seen one of these in a while. An oldie but a goodie. Drop someone in there for about three weeks without food or water. When the fractal breaks down, they come out. A little amnesia and a hangover. Let's see what we got in there. All right, you first. Forget it. I'm not going in there. Why do I have to go in there? Well, because I have the gun. must have abducted the real Dr. Edens after we ambushed it in the museum. And we think we know why. Officer Benson checked Jewel's staff out of evidence before she went to meet him. And we have no idea where? No. And I have other bad news about other missing women. That thing took someone else. According to missing persons report, he hasn't. Which means now our Koichi warrior not only has the Jewel's staff. He's also got his third concubine.
didn't meet at the museum. Where did they meet? I saw Benson write the address down. She must have taken it with her. She's supposed to log where she's going. That's standard procedure. Something my best officers throw out the window when it suits them. I just want to find her, sir. You tell me who kicked whose ass. So we got two women saying they were taken here by different men who ended up being the same man, incidentally wrapped in bandages. People are really sick, you know that? Thank God the women are all right. My guess is we're looking for the creep who stole that mummy out of the back of that truck and he's now dressing like him. And we'll find him. You're right. It wouldn't matter if the mummy had tied off his green to that pole. He'd still convince himself there was another explanation. Everyone only sees what they want to see. Quick thinking with that whole 
stab through the heart thing? Ah, lucky shot. No, you're really good at killing things. So wait, so going back to you thinking I'm such a hard ass, now you're saying that's a good thing? No, that is exactly not what I'm saying. Why can't you just take a compliment? Well, look, I realize we wouldn't have gotten this far if... You know, if, if, if you hadn't, uh... Put the pieces together about the mummy's motives. Don't worry, you don't have to be nice back. <laughs> That's a relief. <sighs> Special Unit 2, Unit 4, please Next on Sci-Fi, Stargate SG-1. We are what we do. Revenge born of hatred. Yes, I'll make them pay. Stirs up more than bad blood. Tell me what you've done. It summons Pumpkinhead. Lance Hendrickson stars in a Sci-Fi original movie, Pumpkinhead Blood Feud. Premieres this Saturday at 9 on The Most Dangerous Night of Television. I wouldn't put a new driver on a run this late at night. The last time you slept. I'm totally fine. Look at me. Oh, yeah. You're real confidence-inspiring. I will so get this thing to the museum tonight. I swear to God. All right, look. If you feel yourself starting to nod, you pull over. If the storm gets worse, you pull over. If you have to so much as scratch your ass, you pull over. We'll be fine. We. Me and the band.
You listen. I got some freaky metalhead telling me some freaky story. And if I got to crawl out of bed at the crack of dawn, the lab guys have to. And their union rules can personally kiss my ass. Anything else there, Willie? More coffee, a uh, morning paper? Excuse me, not too busy. There's some crime scene photos to take. You're not taking any photos. We're taking it from here. Who the hell are you? Special Unit 2. Later. Sorry, officer, but this is our jurisdiction. We're gonna have to ask you to leave. And this is your jurisdiction just because you say so? That answer is correct. I'm under force 20 years and I'm not stepping off a case when no one even knows what the hell it is you people do. Green. Understood. I'll see you another time, detectives. Not if we see you first. Very nice. You're walking you in, you know that? Don't you realize it's easier to be polite than a hard ass? Actually, they did a study at Harvard. Apparently, it really is easier being a hard ass. Well, it probably wouldn't matter if Officer Green did see these things with his own eyes. He just convinced himself they weren't real. Officer Green's running a few ports low. Yep. It's about being close-minded. There are plenty of bright, college-educated people. Couldn't deal with it either. Actually, you just reminded me. I gotta play some bets on Saturday's games. You didn't hear a word I just said. Sure I did. College. You guys... I'm Officer Benson. This is Officer O'Malley. What happened here? I saw this dead guy stick his hand through a two-by-four and strangle me. And yeah, I know how that sounds, but that's the deal, right? What else? Nothing. I blacked out. But when I opened my eyes, there was no mummy in the crate anymore. Okay, you have a concussion. Things are mixed up in your head, that's all. Even more mixed up than usual. But look at the bruises on my neck. Well, you were in an accident. You're gonna have bruises everywhere. Artifact 22171 was a mummy. It woke up, it strangled me, and I'm going to the Inquirer. Okay, Jerry. Jerry, we can treat the missing artifact as an opportunistic robbery, make sure you don't get the blame, and release you. Or you can stick to your story, but then the doctors are just gonna have to run tests. Tests? Well, scans, internal probes. Probes? And blood work, to see if any illicit substances might have been contributing to what you think you saw. You know, that was a pretty hard knock I got on the head. This sweater is irreplaceable. So, where is it? I'll look for it as soon as I have time. You said that ten minutes ago. Do they work here? What, I'm waiting and what, they get to go back and get their own clothes? Sean. He's doing a VR simulation. He's fully escalated. Best thing would be to wait until he's done. Carl, I'll for you on three. What's up? I got your research done. I was on lunch, O'Malley. Interactive raving, a night in a B-Sack. You know what? Private workstation. Yeah, I like my ears tickle. Hey! Yeah! What we have here is your usual mummy reactivation. Thing's dead for 4,000 years and gets revived by an electrical storm. How usual is this? Well, Special Unit 2 has dealt with 11 revivified mummies over the last 60 years. The only difference is our suspect's kind of a rare specimen. He's of Japanese, not Egyptian origin. Rare because Japan used to cremate their dead, being an island nation. Right. How do we kill him? You can't kill him, O'Malley. He's already dead. You know what I mean. Can we shoot him? No internal organs to disrupt. And we'll light him on fire. <laughs> not internally flammable. Drown him? How many more ways of hurting things can you think of? Now, the only force that has any effect on mummies is electricity. Electricity revives them and in larger quantities destroys them. Okay, specifically how? Specifically, you stun the suspect with 10,000 volts. That knocks him out for about an hour, which gives you plenty of time to plunge a steel rod into where his heart used to be and send another 10,000 straight down in there. Works for me. 
Now, a suspect was being transported to the museum to be displayed with other artifacts from his tomb. Stuff he was promised he would have when he woke up in the afterlife. So we assume this suspect thinks this is the afterlife and he goes looking for his stuff. Yeah, so we stake out the museum and wait for him to come get it. Nice to have a slow pitch down the middle every once in a while. O'Malley, have the mummy back here by morning. No more witnesses. And make sure this thing doesn't actually hurt someone. Here. How about doing your job and getting us some information? Not specifically anything about a 4,000-year-old guy last seen in Lincoln Parkway. What are we supposed to split that? Naturally, you have my full cooperation, but um, I'm really not sure how we can help. The artifact was stolen miles from here. Well, we think the person responsible for the mummy's disappearance will come to the museum to obtain the contents of the tomb. Oh. And, and how did you come to that conclusion? A lot of wild guesswork and too much time on our hands. Inside information. I understand if you can't reveal your sources. Yeah, we're going to need your guards to clear out during our stakeout, at least until dawn. Uh, of course. Thank you, Dr. Edens. Uh, please, Harlan. Um, keep me posted, detectives. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon, Harlan. Oh, have I said I think Dr. Harlan digs you? Uh, no, just 18 times in the last two hours. Just because he smiled at me. No, because the way he smiled at you. Okay, you're imagining things. Like you smiling back at him? You know what? Your problem is you only smile at people when you're trying to get something from them. Mm. Well, I wore out the muscles. Look, I was being friendly. Look it up in the dictionary. Big book, a lot of words. And why do you always feel you need to keep people as far away as possible? Oh. Working in Special Unit 2, there's too many things you can't say. Too many secrets to uh, have relationships. That's an excuse. No, oh, it's a survival strategy. If you're right about us not having relationships, it really won't be much of an adjustment for me. I usually scare guys anyway. Well, by telling them what you've seen that no one else has? No, by telling them what I really think about everything. By being honest. Well, that's always a mistake in a relationship. For a warning? To a mummy? Remember, Dorothy, this isn't the regular police. Dorothy. 